world is forgetting about an entire war that's taking place at this very moment. And no, I'm not talking about the war in Ukraine. It's a conflict taking place in a country in Southeast Asia, Myanmar. More than two years ago, a coup d'etat took place in the country. Basically, the military leaders decided to just take over the entire government. And as you can imagine, this didn't go very peacefully. With tons of armed insurgencies opposing the military, Myanmar has fallen into a state of civil war. In the two years following the coup, the military of Myanmar has committed several crimes against humanity. And there's a problem. The international community isn't doing much about it. When the war in Ukraine started, other countries were quick to provide support. But in the two years of illegitimate military rule in Myanmar, nothing of the sort has happened. This could have to do with some outside factors. Some countries are interested in the military keeping its grip on power. Countries like China. China is quite strategically turning a blind eye to the whole situation in its neighboring country. In this video, we'll go over how China is using this illegal coup d'etat to gain influence in Myanmar. And, as you'll see later, the CCP has some big ambitions in the country. These plans are so important that even an illegitimate military takeover won't stand in the way. Another thing that's just as important is you guys liking this video. You see, my videos are not free to watch, but you don't need to pay me any money. The only thing I ask is you pay me by hitting the like button. So, if you're watching this video, be sure to hit that like button below. Thanks a lot. You've probably heard about the situation in Myanmar on the news once before. But the war isn't really covered all that much in the media. So it's worthwhile to go over how this situation developed in the first place. The historical background is important to understand. On the 4th of January 1948, Myanmar got its independence from the British. Back then, Myanmar was named Burma. The then newly founded government of Burma wasn't really stable. The country was a big old mess filled with different ethnic and political organizations. Some of these groups began fighting each other. You had tons of insurgency groups fighting for control over all of Burma. The nation was politically unstable, which eventually led to a 1962 coup d'etat. Military commander Ni Huynh, along with some of his military comrades, took over the country. He thought that under his rule, the country would get back some political stability. So yeah, military coups aren't a rare phenomenon in the country. After this 1962 coup, Ni Huynh's new socialist party ruthlessly ruled over the country. Ni Huynh's government beat down protesters, banned all opposing political parties, and cracked down on ethnic minorities. For decades, Burma was a one-party state, with the Socialist Party being in control of everything. This terrible situation didn't improve for quite some time. In 1989, the country was renamed from Burma to Myanmar, the name it still uses today. But even under its new name, the Socialist government of Ne Win remained in power. The situation improved in 1990, kind of. The military said it would revise the constitution to the pre-1962 one in a move towards democracy. The country held its first multi-party election in a very long time. But this didn't mean that Myanmar actually became a democracy. The military of Myanmar never got back on the promise to change the constitution. The winners of the election were put under house arrest. That's not exactly what we call a functioning democracy. It's safe to say that the military didn't like the results of the election at all. The National League for Democracy, in short, the NLD, won the election by a landslide. This political party got 392 out of the 492 contested seats in the election. But even with this tremendous election victory, the party didn't get to rule the country. The military regime just said that the election results didn't count. It turns out that the military didn't want to lose control over the country. The people in Myanmar had to wait until 2010 for the next election to take place. Yep, that's another 20 years of military regime. However, the 2010 election was just as unfair as the last one. The NLD, the big winner from last time, boycotted the election. The 2010 election was probably fraudulent because the proxy party of the military won it by a huge margin. But in the 2015 general election, the NLD was finally allowed to join the candidates. Just like in 1990, the party won by a landslide. And this time, the military did accept the results, ending more than 50 years of military rule. It all came out right in the end, you would think. 
but sadly, this wasn't the case. It turns out that the Myanmar army still doesn't like this whole democracy thing. In other countries, it would be very weird for the military to mingle in with politics. It's kind of like the Pentagon saying that it doesn't like the Biden administration, so it'll just take over the entire government. We don't see these things happen in most countries, but in Myanmar, that's exactly what happened. By the way, I wanted to ask you guys a quick question before moving on. Did you ever want to start a YouTube channel, but you were a bit uncomfortable putting your face out there? Well, I recently launched YouTube Basics Academy, where I share my lessons on how to build a YouTube channel without showing your face. If that's something you're interested in, you can sign up now using the first link in the description. And as a thank you for watching today, you can get $100 off if you use the code FACELESS. I'll give you a short timeline of how this coup happened. In the early morning on the 1st of February 2021, the coup began. The military arrested the leaders of the government of Myanmar. The leader of the NLD was taken in a raid. With the opposition out of the way, it was time for the next step of the plan. Quickly, the military shut down the internet, phone lines, and television networks. These are the typical things you'd want to do when you're staging a coup. The Tatmada didn't want the population to know what's happening. And now, the military had all the freedom to complete their grab for power. By the end of the day, the Tatmada arrested 400 members of parliament. By now, all the responsibility for legislation, administration, and judiciary was moved to the leader of the Tatmada, Min Aung Hlaing. Basically, he had just become the sole ruler of the country. The military commander went on to form the State Administration Council. This infamous State Administration Council is what we call a military junta, a government led by a military committee. Mian Lang got some of his military friends around the table and formed an entirely new government. Just after the committee was formed, the military junta promised to hold an election after one year of the coup. But unsurprisingly, that never happened. The military junta has been in control of the country for more than two years up until now. During these two years, the Tatmanda cracked down on protesters and political rivals. The death toll of this military aggression exceeds 2,300, according to a UN report. On top of that, 14,000 people have been arrested and 700,000 displaced. And keep in mind that these figures can turn out to be much higher. Because of these reports, the UN has accused the military junta of war crimes and crimes against humanity. The United Nations has repeatedly called on the international community to help the people of Myanmar out. In the two years of military rule, the situation has only worsened. It went from bad to worse to horrific. But the reality is that the international community has done little to push back against the military regime. Of course, many countries have condemned the coup. The US went as far as to put sanctions on the junta and froze a billion dollars of their assets. But apparently, this wasn't enough to stop the Tatmanda from staying in control. We've already talked about the strong political and economic foothold of the Tatmanda. Obviously, this influence helps the junta to keep its grip on the country. They have the resources to stay in power. But there's one other reason for them still being in control of Myanmar. The CCP supports them. The CCP hasn't condemned the coup. Well, coup, eh, according to Chinese state media, the military takeover was a major cabinet reshuffle. What happened in Myanmar is an obvious example of what a coup d'etat looks like, with the military junta arresting an entire government. But the CCP wants to be careful with their words here. China doesn't want to anger the Tatmanda in any way. This is because the CCP wants to strengthen its relationship with its neighbor. China wants to achieve this regardless of the cabinet reshuffle, as the CCP likes to call it. In April of 2022, China's foreign minister, Wang Yi, made the position of the CCP very clear. China will back Myanmar no matter how the situation changes. This is the diplomatic way of saying that the CCP doesn't care whether Myanmar is ruled by a military junta or a democratic government. 
no matter how the situation changes, the CCP wants to keep Myanmar as a friend. Wang Yi said that China has always placed Myanmar in an important position in its neighborly diplomacy. In fact, this position is so important that China wants to deepen exchanges and cooperation with Myanmar. And this support for their neighbor doesn't stay at words either. Despite a non-binding international weapons embargo on Myanmar, China has been one of the key military suppliers of the regime. This means that China is selling weapons to the Tatmanda, which helps the junta to fight its opposition. In other words, China provides the weapons the Tatmanda uses to fight its own people. By doing this, China has helped the Tatmanda to stay in power. But why is China so supportive of the military junta in the first place? Well, there's one answer to this question. China has some big plans in Myanmar. And they have to do with a big project with China's Belt and Road Initiative, the China-Myanmar Economic Corridor. This economic corridor is a big part of China's geopolitical strategy. It's so important that even a military coup doesn't stand in its way. This economic corridor is the biggest reason for China helping the current military regime. Now, what's this China-Myanmar economic corridor all about in the first place? With immense infrastructure projects in Myanmar, China is trying to gain access to the Indian Ocean. Through its neighborly country, China can finally get a land-based connection to the ocean. This is a huge economic opportunity for Beijing. 80% of the world's seaborne trade goes through the Indian Ocean. But this isn't the only reason why China is doing this. It's not just an economic opportunity, it's a geopolitical necessity. As you all know, China is a big trading hub. China relies on imports and exports to keep its economy running. It goes without saying that if China loses the ability to trade, the whole country collapses like a house of cards. And unfortunately for the CCP, China's trade is very vulnerable. 60% of China's trade goes through one 40-mile wide strait in Southeast Asia, the Strait of Malacca. This strait is one of the few ways to go from China to the Indian Ocean. And with 60% of China's trade going through this one strait, it's one of China's weak points. The over-reliance on the Malacca Strait is one of the huge security risks for China. In the worst case scenario that China gets itself into a conflict with the United States, the Malacca Strait would be a headache for the CCP. The Strait would be one of the biggest targets for the potential enemy. After all, when the Malacca Strait gets blocked, China's done for. China can say goodbye to 60% of their trade, which includes essential goods like fossil fuels and food. There's no doubt that Xi Jinping knows about this huge security risk. Luckily for him, there's a way to eliminate it. China has to diversify its trade routes. Here's where the China-Myanmar Economic Corridor comes into the picture. With the project, China can diversify its trade away from the Malacca Strait. Of course, this is all easier said than done. Xi Jinping can't just replace 60% of China's trade routes. However, throwing billions of dollars at infrastructure projects could go a long way. During a two-day visit in 2020, China's President Xi Jinping identified 33 projects to start working on in Myanmar. Beijing is spending around $9 billion to fund a 268-mile railway. It should connect China's southern Yunnan province to Myanmar's second biggest city, Mandalay. Kyukfu, a city right next to the Indian Ocean, has gotten a deep-sea port with Chinese funding. China and Myanmar have also built a network of oil and gas pipelines that connect the coast of Myanmar to China. China is trying to replace the Malacca Strait by building seaports, railways, and pipelines in Myanmar. With these projects, Myanmar could become China's land-to-sea trade corridor in the future. This has a ton of implications for the population of Myanmar. China will try to get more influence in the neighboring countries to make its economic corridor dreams come true. And unfortunately for Myanmar, Beijing does this by backing up the military regime. China is one of the few international partners the Tatmanda has left. By aiding the regime in Myanmar, China gets itself in a good position with their neighbor. The Tatmanda regime will likely support the plans of China simply because they don't really have any other options. After all, who else is going to give the Tatmanda military and economic support? 
The CCP hopes that this leverage will give China all the power it needs to build the economic corridor.